So have you written that J means J advanced? Oh uh, yeah, I have written J means. Not J advanced? No. Why? Uh, I was not interested. Okay, and in means, how much percentile you got? Uh, ninety five point four four. Okay. So uh, yeah, yes sir. Yeah. So Deep, uh, did you take a drop this year, or are you in some college? Uh, in twelfth. Oh, you're in twelfth. Uh, means uh, this year I completed twelfth, eighty percent in boards. Okay, in the our data it is showing thirteen. So. Yeah. Okay. So Deep, uh, what are your areas of interest in mathematics? Um, number theory, functions, calculus. Okay. Okay. So let us start with the question from functions, huh? Just one minute. You know what is uh, asymptote? Uh, asymptote, yeah, like uh, the where it goes to infinity. Okay. So you mean to say that asymptote should be, uh, what is asymptote means? Can you please define asymptote? Uh, asymptote is a point, a uh, line at which the function goes to infinity. Okay. The line at which the function goes to infinity. Okay. Yeah. Is it possible to have a slant asymptote? Yeah. Yes. That is not vertical. That is not horizontal. Yes. Is it possible? Yes. Okay. I'll share my screen. And I'll show you a question. So can you please tell me? Uh, yeah. Can you see the question? Yeah. You have to find A so that it has a slant asymptote Y equal to X plus 3. I'm sorry, sir. I don't know. What will be the meaning of slant asymptote? Means if y is equal to x plus three is to be asymptote, what should be the property of this? Um, like uh, this curve should not uh, touch it. Uh, like it should uh, go to it should approach to y equals to x plus three at both infinities, okay. but it won't touch. Okay. Okay. So your idea is totally correct. So I think you can approach this. Okay, no problem. Let us have some other question. Uh, so you can probably give a hint. Uh, yeah, sir. What you can do, you can uh, write this as x plus 3 plus some other function. And that other function should never become equal to 0 for okay. any value of x. Mm -hmm. Is that OK? Yeah. You write x plus 3 plus some function. And that other function should never become equal to zero for any x. Okay, so like x plus three plus, uh, it should be a polynomial, right? I don't know. Which one? Uh, x plus three plus some other another function. No, it sh it won't be a polynomial. It yeah. need not be a polynomial. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, sir. Okay, no problem. Uh, thank you, sir. I think we should go to some other topic. Yeah, so Deep, uh, can you define the point of inflection? Oh, sorry? Point of inflection. Uh, yeah, uh, it is the point uh, where the derivative changes its sign. Derivative. So x square minus 5x plus 6. Derivative means f dash x changes its sign. Uh, yes, yeah, sorry. f dash x changes its sign. This is what you mean. Yeah, f dash. Okay. And uh, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, graph, how... how would it look like? Uh, so at that point, uh, 
derivative will be zero and it will go like okay is it necessary for point of inflection uh, to have a derivative at that point or, or to be differentiable at that point yes because its second derivative uh, should be defined um, right yes okay So, 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 so graph something like this. Would this be a point of inflection? Sir, so it depends on the function. Like so the function is drawn. Function looks like this. Can you see the screen? Yes, yes. It 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 will be a point of inflection. And what can we say about f dash x at this point? Um, it is increasing. Okay. Oh, f double dash x. Sorry. All oh, right. So, like, f double dash x should be a uh, greater at that point. F double dash x should be what? Greater at that point. Greater. greater <laughs> Greater than zero. This is what you mean. Point of inflection. F double dash x should be greater than zero at the point of inflection. Yes. Hmm. I think he's uh, saying the in point of inflection is where first derivative changes its sign. Huh? Yeah. Okay. I think this concept is not correct, uh, Deep. I think it is not that first derivative. It is actually the second derivative that decides the point of inflection. OK, what other topics, uh, sir, we can ask him from the PNC or number theory, no? So mm -hmm. number theory, uh, you can ask some question. <clears throat> OK, Deep, uh, in how many ordered pairs A and B, such that A plus B is uh, 120, A and B are co-prime, and A and B are positive integers. Mm -hmm. And we are positive. How many ordered order pairs will be there? Uh, so like a, uh, we first we first can see that total no uh, total without taking uh, the co prime uh, constraint the total will be uh, one hundred and nineteen. One two nine one one nine. Okay. Uh, and from that, uh, we have to find the factors of one twenty such that uh, say two factors, a and b. Uh, then their sum should not be one twenty. Uh, so if we find such case, then we subtract it from one one one. Okay. Can you just elaborate more? Um, so like 120 is 1 into 120 or uh, 2 into 60, 3 into 40, 4 into 30, um, 5 into 24, 6 into 20, 7, 8. Um, okay, so like... Uh, all of them will be all one one nine should satisfy. No, 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 wait. Okay. Hmm. Um okay, so um all even case should be uh, discarded because even two plus one one eight and all such because it's GCT uh, GCD will be uh, two or greater than two. Hmm. So we are left with 
right side. Sixty cases, right? Okay. From those sixty. Okay, so we should also remove all such cases of uh, such that multiple is three. So like three plus one one seven, or uh, six plus one one four, because it will be multiple of three. Hmm. So those will be. Okay, so after removing multiples of three, then. <clears throat> so uh, then we check for five. So like we remove all multiples of five. And then um, we check for. Wait a minute. Uh, yeah, so re remaining all cases will be our solutions. Yeah, I think approach is correct. But can you please give the number? Yeah. Answer. Yeah, sure. Very good. Sir, is it 11? 11? <clears throat> Seems to be a small number, I think. How you done it, eleven? Uh, what I did was first I removed uh, all the multiples of two, three, five. Then I added multiple of fifteen. Okay, I should add a multiple of ten and multiple of six. No. Hmm. And then again subtract multiple of two into three into five. Wait. Hmm. Okay, so any other question that we can can we have a question on PN three seven? Small simple question. I will ask one question. Okay, so suppose you have to make a function, so the same question that I asked that day is function f a to b. Mm -hmm. And A is having four elements, and B is having seven elements. You have to make mm -hmm. non-decreasing function, non-decreasing function from A to B. Mm -hmm. Non-decreasing means F1 can be equal to F2, but F1 cannot be greater than F2. OK? Yeah, f1 less than or equal to f2, less than or equal to f3, less than or equal to f4. That's correct. Yeah. You have to count how many such functions can be there. Okay, so um, we can start from uh, a uh, for a4, then we can move from uh, so like f of 4 equals to 1. This gives only one possibility for all f. So uh, like f, f of x equals 1. If we take f of 4, e uh, f of 4 equals 2, then uh, f of 3 can be either 2 or 1. No, but why f of 4 will be 1? Uh, like I'm taking cases. Okay, okay. And the highest number is attached to 1. This is what you're saying. Yeah. Huh. Hmm. Okay, so... If this is mapped to the uh, four is mapped to one, then rest all should be mapped to one. If four is mapped to two, then uh, three has two choices. It can either map to two or one. If three is mapped to two, then again two can have two choices. Then again one can have two choices. But if three maps to one, then uh, two and one will have one only one choice. But in this way, if you count, keep on counting at, uh, I mean, it'll, it'll be a lot of cases when <clears throat> four is mapped to, let's say, a number four or five or six. 
or seven. So this is not a good way to calculate. Yeah. Um, we can uh, do one thing. Uh, if we count all the cases and subtract of uh, strictly increasing from it, or uh, sorry, strictly decreasing from it, then uh, we can find. Okay. So strictly you mean the functions, total number of functions will be the ones which are strictly increasing plus the ones which are strictly decreasing. There will be no other. No, no, no. Uh, huh, yeah, total number of functions will be uh, the ones which are strictly, no, uh, strictly increasing plus six, uh, strictly decreasing plus uh, constant function. Like uh, in between, it can be equal to two and. Okay. So what about these kind of functions? Is it strictly increasing or decreasing? No. These need to be subtracted also, no? Yeah, right. So this this should not be correct approach. Okay. Mm, I'm sorry, sir. Um, to me, first approach. Uh, is only like striking. Because I think uh, he can think of this question later on also. Okay. Take a uh, deep. Uh, <clears throat> so my only feedback is uh, you said calculus, and I don't think you're very good at calculus because uh, you know point of inflection is one of the basic things uh, which you should know. And uh, you didn't know about it. So don't say calculus. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, it may be possible that maybe you are <clears throat> uh, not so confident about this point, but other points also. But again, if you say calculus, they can ask anything in calculus, as simple as that. And again, and you're expected to know that uh, particular thing in calculus. Right. So, so say only the topic that you're very confident about and you know that topic in and out. Uh, that is one. Uh, I think the others, uh, I mean, <clears throat> you need to work more. When is the interview? Uh, 3rd July. 3rd July. So there's uh, quite uh, a bit of time. Yes. Yeah, so, so work on the approaches, maybe uh, whatever uh, your area of interest that you're planning to say. They may not also ask you the area of interest. That is one. Uh, but if they ask, you have to see that, uh, say, the topic which uh, you're very confident about. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and you need to work uh, in, in these two weeks over that. Uh, you can maybe try previous questions uh, which have been asked in ISI. You should be knowing your uh, UGB answers also, which uh, you've written. And uh, I think uh, that is from my side. Yes, sir. I have also similar feedback that you can choose two to three topics which you can claim to you have you know a special interest in. And but uh, you know, you should be having thorough knowledge of that particular topic or subtopic. Like calculus, if you want, so calculus is a very good topic. Similarly, combinatorics or number theory. So whatever uh, topic you think you are strong at, just you know revise that once again, and then only you claim that yes, I am good at that topic. Although they may not ask you a question from there only, they can ask from other topic, other topics as well. But there you will be having some excuse that I am not very good at this topic. So, yeah. and uh, your UGA, UGB, whatever questions you are attempted, you have attempted, just go through them. And because they can ask you that why you took this step or how you have solved this question. So you mm -hmm. should be knowing what you have done so that you can explain them well. Thank you. Chika, we'll have one more round and you can maybe uh, meanwhile think about these questions that uh, you were not able to answer. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.